Do you remember this as a kid, or was this my, like, generation movie? No, I remember this one. Okay. I always thought it was really funny. Although, I'm not gonna lie, when you were giving your, like, clues at our last episode, and you said it was a 90s ninja, or, like, martial arts comedy, I think you called it? The movie that I thought you were gonna say was Surf Ninjas. Because <gasps> I actually remember watching that, like, way more. Oh my god, that sounds way better. <laughs> I mean, this movie was funny, but... I kind of want to surf ninjas pretty quickly. Okay, Okay, well, we are going to do this movie first, and (laughs) we'll see where we go. I can't wait. Yep. I can't wait. Sisters, sisters who've seen it. We are the sisters, sisters who've seen it. Sisters, shooby dooby doo what? Sisters, shooby dooby doo what? Sisters, 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 sisters. Sisters who seen it. Hello! (laughs) (laughs) I mean, hello! If there's a drinking game for this movie, it would be drink every time a ninja makes a noise and then you'd be dead. So don't make that a drinking game. That's a terrible drinking game. Oh, God. Um, So sorry. What's our movie, Kate? Our movie is Three Ninjas. And by the way, listeners, I'm going to introduce ourselves. So we are the sisters who seen it. The podcast where two sisters who are not movie critics look back on some of our favorites throughout the years through a psychological, ethical, and familial lens. I'm Katie. I'm Bridget. And this movie is three ninjas with a number. (laughs) And that was a little confusing to find in searching. So, weird decision, I think. There's also a lot of three ninjas. So this is just the first one that doesn't have lots of other words after it. I saw that because they were all popping up when I was trying to look. And I was like, okay, one of them had, um... What's his name? Hulk Hogan. Yeah, that was it. I was like, oh, dear. Uh Uh-oh, that must be a later on sequel. Wow. If you look at their movie budgets and then Uh what they made, the first movie had a $6 million budget, made like $24 million. The second movie had like a $20 million budget, made like ten. million. And then the rest of the movies made like less than a million. So in general, like they did okay total. But the other movies did terrible. Like, nobody watched them. (laughs) I mean, how many times can you do the same shtick? It's three little boys who want to be ninjas, and then they get thrust into a Home Alone-esque scheme. Karate Kid slash Home Alone. But with ninjas, yeah. Well, I think you should do the synopsis. Definitely. Uh, Yes. This is from 1992. Woo! Which, for context, Home Alone came out in 1990. So they officially stole Uh, all Home Alone pieces. And Home Alone 2. Didn't that come out in 92? Uh, I think so. Oh, snap. Yes, they're riding riding that train. So we start off in a weird suburban town that has a lot of unfinished development areas. (laughs) With (laughs) three young boys who would you say is like 12 and under? Yeah, I think. I guess 12, yeah. Like 12, 11, 9. Probably. I felt like Tom Tom. Sometimes he came off as like a seven year old. Like a seven year old. Okay. So guy. Three young boys, and we learn right away that they are spending the summer training to be direct quote ninja masters. Everybody with me? As seven to twelve year old <laughs> ninja <laughs> yeah. masters. Yeah. <laughs> And they are studying with their father. No. I'm sorry, grandfather. Oh, God, who, I was like, Bridget! Uh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> That's not their dad. Who is a famous ninja trainer, and <laughs> they basically, like, this is the Karate Kid ripoff part. He's like yeah. a Mr. Miyagi type. Mm-hmm. And they end the summer, after learning all these amazing ninja skills, with this very <laughs> strange, casual, almost ninja take over from a 
arms, <laughs> a, an international arms dealer that their father who works at the FBI is tracking that somehow knew their grandpa because their grandpa trained the arms dealer to be a ninja instead yes. of him taking those ninja skills and using them for self-defense and good he decided to be a multi-million dollar arms dealer this is what caused <laughs> trauma and because he was mad at their father that was on his back and almost got him arrested he decided to go to the grandpa and say get your stupid son-in-law to back off of me and grandpa's like absolutely not i might be 900 years old but i could still give a high kick and do backflips galore yeah the stunt <laughs> doubles were off the charts yeah i don't think i paid well because wow <laughs> and, and then because of the grandpa saying no the evil criminal decides to kidnap the three kids but imagine kevin McAllister training like karate kid this is not good so anyone that tries to get them they essentially beat up and have only funny things if you're 10 and under i'd say uh the rest is pretty dumb and dangerous and terrible it's also so 1992 it's so 90s it almost looks like it's a parody of the 90s but that it was not it was it was actually trying to be real their bedroom i was like someone at some point in time is gonna make like a pop-up store in new york city of like just their bedroom be like three ninjas bedroom and everyone's like oh my god Oh, 90. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> and you have to wear a starter jacket to enter. Um, yes. <laughs> so the criminal tries to get them. And then essentially grandpa is like, oh my God, this is all my fault. I have to go. And then dad's like, what? You're a silly old ninja. And he's like, give me an hour. And then they go to this crazy big boat that they're training ninjas, but also have giant weapons. And it's a multi-purpose cargo ship. Yes. Somehow the three little kids beat up about 50 ninjas so it's super (laughs) realistic and in the end they win but the whole time you learn about brotherly dynamics and fighting and well uh, a movie set for 10 year olds might have been made by 10 year olds for all we know probably made by 10 and Emily their neighbor is a little (laughs) character that's like Rocky's girlfriend and she's somehow involved and you know it's um wow it's yeah she's a product of the times she Such was a, those bangs Emily. those bang, the curled bangs i had a lot <laughs> yeah, of those. those those were definitely a product of the time that we was, all had those bangs <laughs> I know that I left out a lot, which we will go through, but this isn't a complicated movie. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty much the plot. The only thing I think okay. that's worth mentioning, because this is what kind of makes the movie, in my opinion, to laugh at, not with, is the three kidnappers who are like, surfer bros. <laughs> so I was like, are, do surfer bros become criminals? Because I don't think that's typically the trajectory for these, you know, personality types. Um, Kate, I don't know about you, but I've seen tons of surfer bros that end (laughs) up uh, kidnapping children. and have yeah. evil uncles oh my god i feel like all the quotes i wrote down was pretty much from those guys I didn't remember them like that honestly i really didn't i just remember oh there were god. three guys that got beat up and were stupid but i did not remember they were like straight up they're like 22 year old surfer bros who are literally looking at a porn-esque magazine of a surfboard and like yes. it's a little uncomfortable um, and did you notice the sticker on their van <laughs> did you notice their <laughs> van sticker and I, hold on yeah wait i wrote it down die yuppie scum that was it die yuppie scum i was like okay that's interesting what i did not remember (laughs) is how over the top the evil guy was oh Oh, my god i'm here to be a bad guy i was like what (laughs) when you literally meet him he is dressed like the evil coach from iceland (laughs) from our last episode they are literally dressed exactly the same except he's wearing like an all white suit and his hair is really gelled and I was like, oh my god, this guy is evil. <laughs> um, also, did you just notice in, in the beginning where he's like, they're making that deal, whatever. He's like, all right, I'll get you your stuff now that you showed me the money. And he's like standing next to this wood box. Did you see what he did to it? <laughs> 
Wait, should we just jump into the scenes? Because, like, I felt like that is a perfect description of how unnecessary this criminal guy was. Okay, yes. So let's make sure we get a little bit of the beginning stuff, though, because I have so many funny things I wrote about when we first start. And we start off with, it's literally the children are narrating, which, again, is kind of leading me to believe that this was made by children because they thought this would be a good idea. And it's just, like, the kids, like, making fun of each other. They're like, you shut up. You shut up. Keep telling the story, man. And then, like, they talk for a second. They're like, you're dumb. You're dumb. I was like, what are we doing? Honestly, I gotta get this out there because once I discovered who Colt, the middle child, looks like, I don't know if I could ever get back. Is it Jamie Lee Curtis, but as a little boy? (laughs) (laughs) I thought the same, same exact thing. (laughs) I literally looked to see if they were related. They're not. They're not. Yo, Jamie Lee Curtis is a bad <laughs> ten-year-old ripping up people. Okay, 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 thank you for getting that because I was like, wow. What? But yes, Colt was so intense, and the oh first God. line was the whole "We spent most of our time training to be ninja masters." <laughs> I hysterically laughed out loud. I was like, wow, we're starting here. Okay. Yeah, and then it's like a switch to the grandpa being creepy where they're like, we got tested every day. Every day there was a new test and the test, in in my quotation marks, was grandpa has a long piece of hay and he's tickling them to wake them up and I didn't like it. And what exactly is the lesson? If, If you wake me up, I should wake up like i'm not really sure what am i learning do you think he put shaving cream in their hands and was just hoping <laughs> they'd have like a little dwayne and robertson then they didn't. oh maybe <laughs> that actually might be a good lesson i guess but no. let's bust out what it takes to be a ninja so first you have to be tickled to wake up second <laughs> you have to kick flower pots which that's a big trend people have yeah. them yeah you have to have a wood statue that kind of looks like a fountain and you just gotta shake it back and forth uh. next you have to to take tennis balls and like flick a, a stick and flick back tennis balls. Okay. You also then have to be a Siberian Husky sled dog and pull your grandpa <laughs> up a hill as he sits in a sled. So that's great. Then you have to balance dirty dancing style on a log with pails of water. Don't slip. It could get wild where you're blindfolded, have a sword, and you're fighting your grandpa on the same piece of wood. What There's is happening? All the while, Tum Tum is sporting a Twizzler hanging out his mouth. (laughs) And listen, I support it, okay? I don't want to hear the hate on him. Kid knows what he wants. He's still getting the job done, all right? Why can't he have a snack? Unfortunately, I'm so sad that nobody thought Tum Tum was cool in 92. Tum Tum's so cool. He holds up. Like now, he does. Honestly, he's the most third child ever. (laughs) Shut up, Bridget. What are you trying to say? What are you trying to say about me? Uh, I will say, well, you got the middle child thing with the four of us. Well, yeah, no, I became a middle child. You used to be this way, too, when we were all three. He is the, oh, my God, there's robbers. We're going to die. Oh, my God, we're kidnapped. And he's like, what ifs? We're going to (laughs) die. Do you guys got any jelly beans? Grandpa, use these. Mm. Like, it was, he was the chillest kid ever, where the oldest, Rocky, was a bossy, like, yeah. He kind of was trying to play dad, which you're like annoying. And then the middle one was the wild card, like angry loose cannon, which I don't know where anyone gets that from. Yeah, he was just really just wanted to be a ninja and wants the world to know. And that was kind of his motivation. That literally made all his decisions for him. He's like, what would a ninja do right now at school on the schoolyard with a basketball? What would a ninja do? Oh my God. Yeah. So, and then we have to talk about how basically Tom Tom decides to almost take his life by jumping in front of a car. Oh, I I hated that. I was like, this is how we die! And then the car stopped. I was like, oh, okay. Damn it, children's movie. Oh, God. Sweating. How old do we think Grandpa is? We think Grandpa's like Like 70? Yeah, I think so. 70? Yeah. Um, Grandpa literally throws a smoke bomb and jumps 50 (laughs) feet into a tree. I wrote, Grandpa backflips slash teleports away! (laughs) (laughs) And he, like, hurt his back in the 
that whole sequence. And then he makes some weird joke about like, don't go up in a tree with your back hurt. And the kids just like laugh. And I was like, wait, is grandpa okay? And also, how is he going to get down? Are we going to call the fire department? Because this is out of control. First of all, the trees were so high that even the like boys <laughs> jumping, I'm like, you just jumped 40 feet. Your legs are broken. What's happening? Yeah. <laughs> it was so funny. And like, that's where he's like, you forgot lesson number or code number or rule. No- what, is, what is it? Something ninjas? The rule of the ninjas? What's Sure. Who, sure. What do we call it? Okay. I think it's, so, I think it was like a code. The ninja code. Code of the ninja. Code number one, or whatever you call <laughs> it, of the ninjas is you don't get into a fight unless you're going to win. And that... Mm. I feel like I would never know how to follow that, so I don't think I could be a ninja. <laughs> well, they said never attack unless you're going to win. That's like the same thing, though. I took it like don't start a fight. Oh, but okay. I still okay. think it's a horrible lesson. Well, because yeah, isn't the was... whole point of karate like self-defense? Like, shouldn't I, you never be attacking? I mean, I think so. But then I guess you become an evil businessman with your gelled hair and your weird silky robes that I don't want to see you wear. Oh, ever, my so. God. And his okay, voice okay. like this. <laughs> <laughs> so, wait, but so we... Oh, and before we see the scary guy, Grandpa then decides to rename the children and give them family masks or something. And, like, I, I remember they were masks. I don't think they ever wear them them do they wear them i know colt wears like his. once when they're fighting the guys the the surfer dudes in trying to kidnap was, them that was a th- i remembered the masks and i remember their names but i didn't realize that like they have actual names like i really yes. in my heart of hearts was like no no, no it's rocky colt and tum tum like no they have other names that yes what like that's weird that's a yes. weird thing and then that's like kind of a plot point where the dad's like you changed your name and colt's like i'm a ninja dad get off my back I'm like, oh my god, this is like Peter Parker levels of emo. Relax. It was super emo. Samuel is Rocky. Wow. Jeffrey is Colt. And unfortunately, Grandpa said, and little one, you're Tum Tum. <laughs> and I thought... <laughs> We don't even know his name. We don't, we, don't, we don't. Because we are so fat phobic and all he does is eat, this will be his only personality trait and he's oh, not even fat. He's I, I seven. Know he's, t- he's totally not. He's probably he's sponsored a- by Weight Watchers. If we're going to make fun of anything about Tum Tum, it should be his bowl cut because that's the only thing about him that did not hold up. Okay. I hope they sell that as like a wig because I would buy that and wear that for Halloween. Okay. Because, awesome. because Dave has been here... I busted out my old middle school yearbooks and like Ooh. elementary school. Wow. Every single 90s kid had the bowl cut. A bowl cut. <gasps> so But like, was many. it like that? Or was it the kind yes. that like went down a little the back? No, oh. it was consistent. Like everywhere you looked, it was just a bunch of mushroom heads. <laughs> like just like every grade was just a bunch of mushrooms. I was like, oh my God, what? Did all of the parents get together and they're like, listen, these brats need to learn some lesson. Give me a bowl. I'm done with this. Or was like oh the hair cutting God. industry on strike and they were like, you I, figure it out. I don't know. And Rocky had kind of weird hair too. He had like this weird, like it was like a cockatiel. Like his part was like over here. And he was like, hey, I'm Rocky. I was like, you look like a bird. I don't know. He doesn't know. He doesn't know yet. Oh, jeez. Oh, God. It's so good. Yeah, so I forgot about that, but that's their ninja names. And basically, the summer's quick. The summer training is quick. Yeah. There's really no end goal except you got new names and a mask. And they come home, and I don't know if you noticed this, but it bothered me a lot. Dad, 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 yeah. And then, of course, the dad, you see right away, he's too busy for them and clearly doesn't care. Then they could give two. About the mom. mom. I know. I felt so bad for her because she was like, oh my God, thank God you guys are here. Oh, it's so awesome. You're ninjas. I love you. I support everything you do. And then Colt's like, get away from me, mom. Whatever. Dad doesn't want me to be a ninja. And I was like, but what about mom? Do you? Does it what? Mean, Literally, okay. nobody, like, everyone hated women in the 90s. Yeah. I don't understand. But the dad, I think this was a kind of a whoops, is the kids are running up and he's, like, in the car doors. If he's saying to the guy driving, give me this report, get this, get that. And then yeah. the kids are like, dad, dad, dad. And then the guy's like, in the car, we gotta go. I'm like, wait, so you told him all this stuff to do as if you're leaving and now you're getting back in the car to leave your kids that you didn't see all summer and don't care? Like, this is so... 
Ugh, yeah, because again, this movie was written by eight to ten year olds, and <laughs> I think as an eight to ten year old, if your parent isn't paying attention to you 100% of the time, you and your brain make up a fake memory of how they're evil, and they purposefully did stuff like that, and that was probably what happened. They were like, yeah, dad then drove away, and never never to be seen again. Oh my god. I hate that plot thread, too. That is such like a 90s plot there, where it's like, oh, our one parent doesn't have time for us, and it's usually the dad, and usually it's it's like the dad character sucks and like you should never like them if they're like that and then the movie's like no you totally should yeah. totally they're great and you're like no they suck like yeah dad is rude and what because he buys pizza at the end i'm supposed to like him get away from me no Mm-mm. listen and it wasn't any like you know chunks mom type pizza coming home uh, for love no. <laughs> he was like um i'm gonna be a hero in front of everyone you're like shut up sam like that was oh his my name. god i didn't even write his name because he's the worst. Okay, let's get to the evil guy because I want to again go back to the wow, scene I was talking about scene. before. Okay, wow, wow, so, wow, wow. And I was nervous because I really felt like the movie was going in a racist direction. And there are obviously parts in this <laughs> that are. Um, yes. But when the one guy who was like doing the deal, he looked like he was from maybe like. Saudi Arabia or like the Middle East and like it was kind of portrayed like that so you're like all right really 90s like you're just kind of like oh look how evil they are buying like weapons like Mm -hmm. so evil and then fine it was like an undercover cop the guy though if you're an undercover cop I'm just assuming like you're a professional and like you know how to handle situations like that he was so unprofessional he was like ha ha it's me I'm a cop (laughs) and then he didn't have a weapon as he like announces his plan and he's like you're all surrounded and he's literally standing like five inches from a fucking ninja guy and we know he's a scary ninja guy because right before that he goes let me get your weapon and he elbows through the lid of a wooden (laughs) box you could have opened the lid snyder (laughs) what are you doing honestly i kept thinking like he was like he took his hands and he like put them together and and he started like (laughs) you know going back and forth back and forth and you're like wow what is is he thinking like this isn't enough money is he not believing this guy because this guy looks super italian pretending to be you know whatever racist character and you're right he then decides to karate chop a box that had a lid it had a lid it had a lid and he elbowed right through it and he was like "Ah!" also it's like an explosive are we really trying to just like attack an explosive wait and i'm pretty sure they used that same exact box in a later scene towards the end when the kids were on the boat because there was a part where it was probably tum tum i'm assuming it was him but one of them was hiding in what looked like that box and some guy is like leaning over it and then a foot breaks through (laughs) it and it's the same thing like it explodes and then the foot just like pauses like sticking out and the camera like lingers on it and i was like that's the same prop like we didn't even like somebody consciously was like we're good we need this box that explodes and we're gonna use it many times it's very important again 10 year old decision everyone okay okay at this point the fbi I says they're surrounded and the slicked back evil Snyder dude says ha, 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 I love surprises <laughs> oh my god and then he's like why don't you drop in and then like 500 ninjas drop from the ceiling I'm like oh you're gonna be one of those bad guys are ya alright puns galore I'm ready oh my god and then this reminded me of like like have you seen the movie The Room like you know yes. how people make fun of that movie <laughs> yes it, he was so such a like bad evil character with his super Iceland slicked back hair that <laughs> when he left, he left on a ladder oh, oh of a God. helicopter. <laughs> And just flew away like we're in a video game. Did you hear what he said, though, before he got on? No. He's standing at the edge of the building, and the dad is like, hands up, I'll shoot. And he turns around, and he goes, sorry, but I've got to fly. And then he jumps off the building, <laughs> and he's like, he comes up, and he's like holding the ladder, and then he flies away. And I was like, is this a meme? Because I need it to be one to use anytime Please. I say goodbye to someone, because <laughs> I need that. It was so funny. Please make this a meme so, oh so bad. Oh my god, I it can't. Was, 
It was so ridiculous. And then this is what starts Snyder on the, that was too close. I have to go back to Maury, right? That's the grandpa's name. Uh, and yes, he's like, tell that his stupid son-in-law to back off. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to send my evil ninja guys to go to their, I don't that know. That was so extra. The ninjas like flip over cars. Like we could just walk up. Like we don't got to like make this like a spectacle. Call. I mean, this isn't like Cirque du Soleil. Okay, we can relax, but nope, Wait. it was a whole ninja charade. <laughs> but I also have another thing to add before that. So, you know, the show Chopped? Yes. I think that there should be a ninja version of it because <laughs> those three boys cooking dinner ninja style was so ridiculous that they chucked food and then caught it on a plate. And Rocky, like, again, unnecessary ninja stuff. He, like, parkours over the counter and the table. And I was like, you can just walk around. Like, this isn't a big kitchen, Rocky. I don't understand. And, What's like, happening? did you see how fast he was chopping things? He was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, these three little white boys. Oh, my God. Then Grandpa decides to pull what I would call a dad move, because I feel like dad would do this. Boys, what is a ninja? And Colt becomes Surrey and Bersa- <laughs> decides to do <laughs> the definition of a ninja. <laughs> dad would definitely ask a question like that. You're 100% right. Yeah. Oh my god. I don't even remember what makes a ninja. One of them was like, use the stuff around you. And I was like, I mean, okay, I guess. And then they do that a lot. But I'm like, I don't know if like real ninjas do that. But okay. Okay. And I don't remember any of the other ninja rules except like don't get in a fight or something stupid. I don't know. I just Who knows? remember the last one where Colt was like, never use your power on anyone weaker than you. And then Grandpa steals his nose. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that? Yeah. That was cute. That was cute. There's a lot of, like, parts that are, like, kind of cute in here. Like, oh, I forgot when Grandpa names Tum Tum, and he's, like, building it up. He's like, you shall be called Tum Tum. And the little kid is so cute, and he just starts giggling, and he's like, (laughs) Tom Tom, that's so cute. I I love him. I think Tom Tom is he underrated. Was cute. Yeah, definitely. He is so great. So definitely. wait, the other thing is when all these ninjas come up, like it literally is a video game come to life. 100%, Did you yep. notice the intense Zelda music? It was like <laughs> no. do, 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 do. I don't with I like, like a flute. What? I have no idea. And at this point, I'm realizing Colt is Jamie Lee Curtis. And I'm so distracted. I'm like, wow. Wow. Oh, my God. Yeah. And then the grandpa's like, stay over here. And then the kids immediately ignores directions. So, again, written by children, um, for children, by children. Don't listen to adults. I, the adults do yes. things on your own. So they go and they beat up these grown ninjas who, like, you know, I just thought would have, like, adult training. But, nope. They adult suck. power. Adult. Uh, most of them had guns. Yeah. So. There was not a lot of yeah. gun usage. Thus, the frequent ninja-ing. Okay. Um, <laughs> ninja-ing. Yes, there was a lot of that. Also, the other thing that I thought was like so freaking weird is like, okay, after they fight, right, and all these yes. ninjas are like, whoa, boing, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> the guy comes up and he was like, oh, not bad, you passed my test. I was like... <laughs> Did you, wait, was the test trying to, like, kill them? And then you, you, like, it didn't work, so you tried to play it off, and he's like, oh, good. Uh, uh. He's like, I meant, I meant for I you meant to beat that. up all my adult ninjas. I totally I meant, meant for that. your ten-year-old boys to beat up my team that I oh, trained. My God. Okay, and then somehow, from there, the children then, again, like, saunter off to the side, and then it's Snyder talking closely to Grandpa. He, like, offered him money, too, right? He was like, I'll yeah. pay you to, like, tell your son-in-law to back off or something. I was like, that's a weird thing to pay someone for, but sure, you're evil, I guess. And, like, they're talking, and Snyder is clearly, like, an evil man, and Grandpa's clearly uncomfortable, and the children, standing off to the side, are like, wow, they look like they're friends. I was like, do you guys know what friends are? Because 
have like friends don't send ninjas to attack you. I'm uh, no, you've been spending too much time with adult grandpa. You need some time with other children because like I think you're confused. Literally, they're bonding with grandpa was jumping in front of his car. They have <laughs> yeah, mixed not, messages. No also, social skills. <laughs> grandpa yeah. screamed at Snyder and said, "I teach ninja, not murder." Not murder! And <laughs> the kids were like, "Wow, that's crazy." Moving and they're on. like, "They look like best friends, don't they?" That seems fishy. I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. So and that's why they have that whole stupid plot thread where, like, Colt is convinced that Grandpa is secretly evil, even though Grandpa, like, doesn't do anything but, like, train little children. Like, ugh, I don't know. I don't know. Stuff. But in terms of Snyder's absurd quotes, do you remember this absurd quote from this scene when he's yelling at Grandpa? Uh, no. What His final quote was, get Sam out of my life or I will rip out your heart. What? <laughs> my God. And I wrote, well, that escalated. That escalated. <laughs> he made a lot of scary threats to like rip out body parts. And I was like, is there an X rated version of this movie? Because that might be kind of cool. I'm not so, like, a, like a Quentin Tarantino version. Ooh. Okay. Ding, ding, ding on a little bit of the violence. Apparently yeah. the, I think because Disney eventually got this. And oh, it was really? this, it was like Touchstone, oh, you know, oh, Touchstone yeah, Disney. Touched, yeah. And they said it was too violent. And so <gasps> part of all those like silly stupid noises like the boing, 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 and oh, like my God. Boing, 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 that was to help soften it. And I think half of the scary part was this Snyder. He was terrifying and also wow. really weird. He was weird. Yeah. Well, thankfully he leaves, thank God. And then I guess uh summer's over and we are driving the children back. Grandpa has a really Really cool car. He's got a hot rod red convertible, and that just didn't seem like the car Grandpa was gonna have, but he did. So way to go! And did you hear the song the kids were singing as he were driving? <laughs> Because it was really funny. Oh my god, yes. It was like an R-rated version of I Lost My Poor Meatball. And it was something about like, it was like, I shot my poor teacher. I was like, ah! With <laughs> a 44 and something gun. And I was like, oh my god. whoa, what did your teacher do besides ask you to do some summer reading? I Leave <laughs> them alone. <laughs> yep, so that's when they get, oh, and you know, we forgot, which I guess is important kind of, even though it only took up like maybe 20 seconds, was Grandpa's like, here's a dummy that yes. lights up when you hit certain parts so you're gonna train on this. Bye! And then Grandpa leaves them <laughs> to do that by themselves. So... I feel like yeah. it, it was like a souped up scarecrow, and he was yes. like touch here, and then it was like ding! And he was like, now touch here. And like, Grandpa, that's the same spot. And he's like, no, half an inch <gasps> makes all the difference. And then it like doesn't ding. And I'm like, that's definitely not how that was made. Because this I literally looks yeah. like a yarn doll from like some <laughs> grandma. Um, but... <laughs> That's the lesson they need for the guy later, for the big, giant, scary guy later. I mean, I guess it's but just Kate, probably could have still. I don't know. Whatever. I, that, I that don't was a know either. Thread. So they get back home, and you know their dad is super rude, and mom is like, "Why doesn't anyone love me?" And then freaking Emily shows up like that girl yo she was a little thirsty for 12 year old Rocky I she gotta was say. super thirsty and she yeah. also was like a mom at age 11 which uh, I did not like that she was always in the position of like ah, be safe ah, or she was like why are you showing off? Show off yeah I was like Jeez. you know what 90s I'm sorry but if I'm biking with some boys and they go up a hill I'm beating their ass yeah. up that hill I am jumping higher like I hate this whole like, I'm weak. I'm a woman. I'll hold your jacket while you play basketball. Oh, I hate it. Well, and then the 10 year old movie creators were like, oh no, we'll make up for all that because we're going to give Emily one scene where she knees a guy in the crotch. Um, but that's it. That's it. So doesn't that make up for all the bad writing we did? It doesn't. Well, wait yeah. till you see what we do with the dad because he'll make it up <laughs> by just buying pizza. So yeah, not great, but she's like, oh my God, Rocky, thank God you're here. I've been thinking about you all day. And then he's like, hey, Emily, it's me, Rocky. And then it's called the Tom Tom saying, Rocky loves, loves Emily. Emily. Rocky, Rocky loves, loves Emily. Emily. Just, that's a, that's a good song. Somebody mix that into like a club jam. Waka, waka, waka. Like Lady yeah. Gaga comes in and she's like, Rocky loves Emily. <laughs> that, that, would be a, that would be a 
good song. I'm saying right now. <laughs> Definitely would. Pow, pow, kick, light it up, boys. Sorry. Oh, God. Um, yes. And Kate, then we, first of all, we're introduced to Mr. Brown, which is Snyder's wimpy side uh, oh. assistant guy who is the uncle of your favorite characters. Oh, my the God. Dumb surfer dudes. They're so stupid. This is how we get involved with them. And Kate, part of their personality was, yes, they're dumb. <laughs> and they're surfers. They're, they're like Spicoli, right? They're, they're yes. the sp- Spicoli of 90s terrible movies. And did you notice how whatever they would eat in their van, they just throw it in the back? <laughs> yes. And I kept thinking, you guys must smell. You guys don't have jobs. Definitely. You're dumb. What? This is just so weird. You're such a weird character. I had so many lines from these guys. And again, I didn't remember them being like, oh, bro, gnarly. One of the lines was, yo, you, go get those gnarly little snack cakes. I was like, what the F is happening? And then they like turn around and rob a guy. I was like, I just don't think this is how this happens, everyone. Like, I feel like that clerk could probably beat them all up. Like, 100%. Even if they were armed. So I don't well, know what's going on. They were so stupid, the clerk could have been like, look behind you. And they'd be like, what? And then he could have <laughs> escaped. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that guy, which this was another, like, obviously the movie didn't mean this to be funny, but like, to me, I laughed so hard. But he gets, because it's the 90s, right? So it's early 90s, so there's no cell phones. So he gets a beep. He gets a beep. He has a beeper. I was like, what? this guy has a beeper because he does not have a beeper. I'm sorry. You can't present these, like, idiot stoners surfer dudes and then be like no nah, that guy is a beeper like he's a businessman no wrong movie capital letters i go his beeper goes off wow technology <laughs> i laughed like so hard because i was like oh my god that's so funny and stupid literally this is gonna make me sound so old but kids today would be like what is that i don't kids even know like, what that is the f- was that a thing because that's yeah. stupid his walkie talkies going off yeah <laughs> is pretty cell phone cell phone. Yeah, so that was weird. And then I don't know why this, what was the guy's name? Mr. Brown? That was like Schneider's assistant that was like, oh, but I'll, I'll get the kids. Like, I was like, oh like, my God. Like of all the people you could have hired to do a kidnapping job in your evil underlord crime belly world, you pick these three? Because the guy's your nephew? I'm confused. Listen, the same people that picked Team USA Hockey, okay, <laughs> is the same people giving advice on picking these three ding-dongs. Oh, my God. It was just really, really weird setup. But they were funny. So then they're like, all right, totally. Let's go kidnap the children. And then they go one night, but there's all the cops or whatever. So they're like, never mind. We'll try tomorrow. And you're like, okay, <laughs> what is happening? But that's oh, okay. <laughs> Because we get the three boys happen to be in the same bedroom of a giant house, yes, right? Right. True. And in that giant bedroom, they have Jamie Lee Curtis is on the little uh, jumping uh, trampoline. Oh my god, it was so tiny too. I was like, you're gonna break an ankle. Why isn't that wider? What's going on? Tom Tom is playing Mario. I was like, this is my life. This is while my childhood. While he's eating jelly beans, yes. While he's eating jelly beans, and then Rocky's like somehow with. <laughs> some technology talking to Emily with a light that has a can on the end of it no technology at all for her to hear him what is that contraption I don't know but it was so funny I was like y'all got beepers and then Rocky has developed like alien technology <laughs> to talk to next door neighbor Emily in his times of need oh my god and she's always ready she's like hey oh she's ready hey. oh yeah hey there I'm here hey Emily hey. does not have her own life her life is only waiting for Rocky and it's very sad and I hate it oh also wait we have to talk about this side scene before the surfer dudes go in the second night there is a clip that goes to grandpa grandpa Oh my god, yeah! In in the night, practicing his sword skills, dressed up like a ninja. Ninja. And it's also really foggy, but there's moonlight and wow. 
what? Grandpa, you can practice inside, I think. Like, I'm not really sure why. During the day. Without the outfit. (laughs) Probably should be sleeping. I don't know. Oh, jeez. Grandpa is so old. What is he doing? I don't know. He uh, It was a lot. But don't worry. The next morning, we have a zany bike ride to school. Uh... (laughs) And that's where they ditch Emily. Straight up. And then somehow the bad guys are, like, following them in a car, which is creepy, and I hate that. And then they slam into a cop car and they all go whoa fender bender (laughs) (laughs) and somehow they're totally fine there's three burglars they have guns and don't worry they smash into a car and don't worry they're off the hook the next hour Uh, welcome to america yeah also emily then meets the evil neighborhood bullies. Bullies! 90s bullies! 90s so well! Bullies, which are starter jackets puffed up <laughs> and really ridiculous neon prints and yes. big high top Converse sneakers. What was happening? He wanted a girl's bike for his little <laughs> sister and then they end up fighting in the basketball court and the whole lesson is about Rocky being like cult we know we could beat them up with our ninja skills but we need to practice restraint we shouldn't do this and how stupid was this whole stupid thing it was really stupid and I was like this is a lot of things happening before school like you guys are all gonna be late especially Emily because she don't got a bike now so She's we're screwed. all screwed and she literally didn't even look sad and then Rocky's like oh my god Emily and she was like Thanks. I was like, what? Oh, geez. Emily looks back on this role and thinks, wow, I wish I wasn't Emily. <laughs> We all do. But that they get in the basketball game because Colt is like playing a weird game of like pass the basketball back and forth to your friend in the schoolyard, which, uh, okay. And then it rolls away and then the bully's like, oh, basketball, that's mine now. And I'm like, this is the school's basketball, number one. So everybody relax. Number two, Colt, there's probably other basketballs, but no. He's like, give it back. And then somehow this turns into a, we're going to challenge you for a basketball fight or a game. And then Rocky, because he's an idiot, goes, what are we playing to? And the kid goes, 10, duh. As if, like, <laughs> I mean, I didn't know that rule either, so fine. And then Rocky goes, fine, you guys get a nine-point head start. What? Well, That's like Space Jam level of stupid Kate, decisions. Kate, this is Space Jam. Because oh my god. Clearly Rocky's from <laughs> Moron Mountain because yeah. the out of control basketball nonsense. He does a Michael Jordan uh, slam dunk as yeah. a four foot nothing yes. little boy. He does an alley oop slam dunk. Yep. One time he just chucks it behind his head. It goes in. They get like pushed to the ground like many times, but every time that happens, the ball like flies up to the hoop and goes in. I'm like, oh my god. Yo, the <sighs> lunatic should have just got these two to play with them against the monsters with them because probably would have been a quicker game than Michael. <laughs> I just never knew being a ninja meant you knew how to play basketball. Oh, yeah. You didn't know that? That was grandpa's uh, code number seven is you must be good at basketball to be a ninja. Well, and then the lesson, there is no lesson because they just push him down, score a point, and then they're like, wow, if we just played 0-0, we would have lost by nine. But since you gave us nine points, we won and and took your bikes. And Tom Tom's like, again, y'all are idiots. I got a bike and jelly beans again yeah. why does everyone hate my character i'm the coolest and then finally there's an adult that's like hey you kids let's go in from recess and i'm like we need more adults oh okay so next scene is grandpa is trying to stalk snyder <laughs> and for this scene i wrote grandpa literally is the worst disguise because it's just him wearing a hat while also driving his very noticeable red convertible with the top down <laughs> <laughs> in broad daylight. Grandpa, like, you're not even trying. At least put on, like, your ninja outfit so, like, nobody can see your face. I don't understand. Like, he literally just had a hat on. I was like, um, gay. Okay. And he was always, like, had these weird facial expressions. Like, everyone must know him in the town because they're like, Seriously. That's, that's the guy that does sword fighting at night. <laughs> that's that weird guy. Don't look him in the eyes. Jeez. Yeah, I don't even know what the point of that scene was. I guess it was just to show, like, Grandpa's got his eye on snow. Snyder and he sees that Snyder has a boat, but like, wait, 
So <laughs> we stupid. Did, didn't need that. Uh, but don't worry, because the next scene is when the bad guys bust in and try to kidnap. And again, movie hates women. The babysitter is a 80 year old grandma who has curlers in her hair. Um, her only lines are like, we didn't order pizza, and then whimpering. That was it. Yeah. That was her acting debut. She literally got thrown in a closet with pizza on her face. And like, that's not cool. And then the kids are like, that's awesome. And I'm like, no, that's rude. Um, Tum Tum yelled at her. This is where I didn't like oh, Tum Tum. Yeah, I know. He exactly yelled at her saying. and said, you better save us some pizza. I'm like, she's traumatized. Oh my God, rude. Like, focus on the situation, guys. Jeez. So once they come in, basically, any normal kid would say, wow, we have people trying to kidnap us. Let's call the cops. Instead, yep. they think, this is our chance to tell our dad karate is worth it because our dad doesn't like that we do karate and we have to show him that it's worth it. So we're going to put our lives in danger and put in Home Alone, learn all Kevin yep. McAllister's skills and apply it at our home. And honestly, it's kind of violent. You think? The guy almost choked to death. I was like, oh, Oh, I hate this. I hated this is, like, that. Ball. I hated the chili bomb in the face. I hated. Oh. I hated all of it. I hated. Yeah. Just, it, it was like everything you can imagine. They slipped. They got choked. They got like powder in the face. They had diarrhea. I mean, oh, my freaking diarrhea. god! You know what the problem was? There was no sense of like urgency on anyone's part. Like the Anyone. kids are like, let's take like an hour. We're gonna. We have like eight phases. Rocky's like, I made a PowerPoint. You know, we don't have time for this. <laughs> <laughs> and the kidnappers are like, first, let's go in and sit down and have a pizza for an hour. Then we'll, like, make our own PowerPoint about how we should kidnap these kids who are, like, 10 feet away from us upstairs. Like, they went on for so long. I'm like, this is, so I don't long. think this is how real kidnappings go. I think they were just, like, chilling. And if I'm 10 and someone is there to kidnap me, Kate, once again, there is fight or flight. I am flighting. I am down yep. the street. I have yep. stolen some other kid's bike. Yep. They literally are just casually, like, I'll be in the room down the hall you guys can go in the other yeah. room Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Figure it out. And then after the guys get, like, their butt kicked, they decide to not be surfer dudes and say, You know what, bros? We gotta think smarter, and we gotta figure out what's their <laughs> fatal flaw. Literally said that out loud. What is their fatal flaw? Let's go to their room. And then they, like, go through their diaries. Everyone in their audience was like, Their fatal flaw is Emily, because she's such a flaw <laughs> character. It's so sad. And that's what Use happened. Use alien technology to get Ali- Emily. Here. She's always around. She literally, she's dead asleep. Homegirl is in like REM sleep cycle and they like start making weird noises and then she's like, Rocky, oh god, is that you? And then he's like, totally, come on over. Like, doesn't even tell, like, Rocky. She's like, what? Oh, jeez, here I come. I was like, Emily, no, girl. You, This is not what you do. You need to think about you sometimes, okay? And look she what happened. She doesn't. She doesn't. what I, happened. Honestly, I think she needs to date around. I mean, she's putting yeah. so many eggs in this basket. So yeah. she gets kidnapped, and then all the boys are like, what do we do? Oh, boy. And then Tom Tom jumps from an animal on the wall and attacks <gasps> the guy. <laughs> it was a oh, yeah. boar's. Head, which, looking at the other kind of like indoor decor house design, I just don't think Didn't fit. this Didn't is. Fit I don't think this is something we have, um, unless there's like a secret hunting room that no one knows about. But I don't think that's real. So, yeah, I don't even know. But basically, because this took seven hours yep. to complete, Snyder and Mr. Brown are like, okay, this isn't good. We should just literally go over there. Which, by the way, why didn't you just do that in the first place? I don't know because that was very quick and then we're out so thank and god and then they were out that yep. really i mean they literally have a team of like thousands of ninjas and they do, they do. they're all on the boat over there that everyone knows about apparently but we just oh like let it. we just like leave it be you know it's fine yeah so that's they get kidnapped and then i guess right away the dad and the mom find out they've been kidnapped and <laughs> the scene so it's like there's like panic and like everyone's like oh my god oh my god where are the children where could they be Hi-ya! emily walks up so casually Julie, girl! She's like, hey, hey, to the mom. And the mom's like, not now, Emily, all right? Like, go, like, dream about Rocky over there. And then she's like, wait, I have to give this to you. And she gives her a piece of paper that I don't know where she got it from. No one knows. But she got it from somewhere. And on the paper, it basically said, if you send the FBI to look for the kids, Snyder's gonna kill the kids. 
also the kids are with Snyder. So I'm not really <laughs> sure. I okay. have many okay. questions okay. You, about all of this. You made me watch the movie Barb and Star go Barb to Vista and Star. <laughs> go to Vista Del Mar. And yes. do you remember one of the criminal characters is the guy who's undercover that keeps displaying all of his secret information. Like he keeps like saying his name and oh, he's like, yeah. damn it, you weren't supposed to know. And he keeps saying his address and he's like, damn it. Literally that was Snyder. It was like, this yes. is Snyder. The kids yes. are with me, but don't come after me. But this is Snyder. So Snyder has, so don't, don't come after Snyder. It wasn't Snyder. Get rid of this note. <laughs> also, Emily, are you working with Snyder? Like, how did you get that? I'm so confused. <laughs> oh my God, Emily's the secret evil lord. <laughs> oh my God, what's going on? You better get to bed, lady. It's like 2 a.m. now. Jeez. Oh, yeah, that sends us to the final scene. Well, it sends us to the final scene and that's where grandpa's like, hey, I'm a ninja, remember? I can save a um, and the dad is like, that's I, uh, stupid. <laughs> we are the FBI. We could probably get them. And grandpa's like, no, I have to ninja my way to the children. This is a ninja journey for me now. Now it's grandpa's story. Straight up, this is Goonies never die stuff. Like It really is. Literally, grandpa's like, ninjas never die. Ninjas never die. And they always have fog around them at nighttime. <laughs> the dad is like, you're actually just somebody that likes ninja costumes. <laughs> you're too old to be doing kicks it's only stunt doubles can we move on from this movie also everyone knows you drive a red convertible so we can't have you be the one to go because they're all gonna know it's you from eight miles away okay so yeah the kids get kidnapped and they are brought to again the boat that we all know is snyder's in the town everyone knows it that's who they are it was really easy to find them i still it's feel like, like the fbi can it's get got in like here. snyder's boat on the side like right in. <laughs> it's like it might as well have because like what is the point and so the kids are locked up in a room and then they have another stupid conversation where cult is like grandpa's evil and then rocky's like he's not evil don't worry and then tom tom is like really sad about it he's like oh, grandpa's evil i was like tom tom don't be stupid now for real of all the times like you've been doing really great up to this point so like keep it up and that's where grandpa busts in the kids somehow get out and it has something to do with like they do a little phone trick oh my god i will tell you what that it what this is oh. because Rocky's like okay as a ninja one of the ways to be a ninja cult he presses cult cult repeats what a ninja is and then it's to use their surroundings so he had yeah. a phone he called someone and said hey can you call me back I want to make sure the phone's working the phone calls him back and then the guard outside was like why is the phone ringing and he's like it's for you and then the guard opens up the door and then he takes the phone and smacks him that was actually the most interesting piece of this entire movie I was gonna say I think that's a good plan. Like yes. I don't I would have never done that. Yes. So this like is that's like pretty smart. Some Clarice like, oh, it's definitely an 0926758. And that's where the evil dead guy is. Like, oh, my God. I was so impressed. And then they got out. And then meanwhile, Grandpa's just going around in his glittery suit. And he's just hitting people. And they're hitting people. And- Grandpa's nonstop running while karate chopping. And then the children do the same thing. And it's just a lot of like, you know, again, we're just kind of beating up ninjas in different ways. There's a part where they make like nunchucks out of steel pipes. Tools I don't know and where pipes. Got that strength to rip off some steel pipes. It's just a lot of beating people up. It's like video game. Like they like it, leveled yes. up to this guy. Yes. Also, I could not find this anywhere in terms of fun facts. Yeah. But I think the kids were actually fighting the whole time. Oh my god, I do too. I was actually like, I, I wrote this. I was like, this is like, I am impressed with the yeah. fight choreography. And you could tell it was the kids doing yeah. stuff sometimes because they would keep them in frame. They could all clearly kick and do like dive out of the way and kind of things like that. I don't think a lot of the jumping was the yeah. actual actors because they were like jump cuts but yeah and some of it like you were watching for like 30 seconds of them just literally going back and forth like a kid fighting two guys and I was like wow this is like this is pretty cool. Well, that's, I was like that's actually my favorite part of the movie it's like yeah. the kids are actually doing karate where yes. grandpa is like 50 different people depending yes. on what move he's doing and you're like <laughs> okay yeah, and then they come across the big, like, bodyguard man who goes, he goes, come on, my little bip. <laughs> I don't know what a bep is and he might not have said that but that's what I heard and I thought that was really funny and I was like why and this is the moment grandpa screams oh, 
<laughs> Light up the eyes, boys! Light up the eyes! And I laugh so hard because this is all Dave Coleman has been screaming while <laughs> staying at my place. Also, Grandpa, maybe instead of yelling at me to do things, you should come up down from your giant perch up there and help us beat up this bodyguard! Because what are you doing up there? Kate. Taking a nap? Jeez. Kate, he eventually does, but it's like 30 feet in the air and he just magically lands <laughs> fine. I can't even get out of like a car without being afraid of tripping. He does it after the bodyguard is like beat up. I was like, well, 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 look who finally showed up here. Jeez, <laughs> letting the three little ninjas beat up old men. My God, my God. And then this is where somehow Snyder comes in. Oh, and then all the ninjas like finally are like, I guess we should whip out our guns because we forgot we had those this whole time. Whole time we had guns. Never <laughs> yeah. used them. Whole time they were there. And then somehow this turns into Snyder challenges Grandpa to a ninja fight. And if Grandpa wins, they leave. If Snyder wins, I don't know what happens. He I dies. Guess Gra- oh, Grandpa no, dies. Snyder oh, yeah. was so oh, yeah. extra that he was like, wow. He dies. And he looked around at his hundreds of men and said, did you all hear that? And they were all like, uh, okay, he's old, but okay. Oh and my God. And that's how dramatic Snyder was. Yeah, he was very dramatic. And then the kids are like, no, Grandpa, no. And then he goes, remember the rule of the code or something. You don't fight unless you're sure you're gonna win. And you're like, but like, again, aren't you gonna win, Grandpa? Because you're like really old and you didn't help us that last fight. And I don't know about that so careful now and yeah this was definitely a uh, multi-use of stunt doubles because i swear to god there was one scene where it was like a wide shot of snyder and grandpa in the frame and you could just tell it was like a clearly in shape actor as yeah. grandpa and he wore like it looked like a straight up pillow on his belly Oh so that it was God. like, see, I'm grandpa, because he's like old and like a little stockier. And you're like, that's not, you're not the same person. <laughs> what oh are you my doing? God. I, it, was it was so lame. And then don't worry, because what saves grandpa at the moment he's going to die oh. is Tom Tom's jelly beans. Because Tom Tom is the unsung hero. Yes. yes. He's like Chunk from the Goonies. Yes. Nobody, yes. everyone makes fun of him as a kid. They grow up later. All the adults love him because they know he's going to be a good kid. And he chokes Snyder, and that's what they gives him superpowers to come back and basically kick the living crap out of Snyder. And then Grandpa is hovering over him and he has his fists like this. And, <laughs> and then Grandpa's like, no, it's not the ninja way. And then he walks away and everyone's like, yay! I was like, oh my god, what is happening? And then again, weird timing, this is when the dad is like, hey, now I'm here right now. Not like five seconds earlier when I could have helped Grandpa. Right now I'm here and we have guns. Also, we could have done this plan first, but yeah, we, we did. We, uh, so. we had to wait for Grandpa to take his hour ninja. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah, it's, exactly. it's like, you know, minute 59, so we waited long enough. But then oh Snyder God. pulls out a gun, about to kill them all, and then he gets shot. So, yep, yep. Oh. So, yeah, and then, again, I guess the whole, like, storyline is then, like, well, now Dad's gonna take us for pizza, so, you know, he appreciates our ninjing now. I'm like, why does he appreciate it now? Because now, if I were a parent, I'd be like, yeah. the ninja lifestyle, this sh- I- bananas! Bananas. I don't like You could it. end up like an evil international yeah. arms dealer. You could no buy way. all the hair gel and wear <laughs> weird robes and elbow through boxes. And I don't like it. No. Mm-mm-mm. And literally his reward is like, boys, because you basically killed a hundred different adult men with your ninja skills, I'm going to take you out for pizza. And they're all like, oh, man. And the mom's like, boys, I love you just the way you are. And they're like, I love you, mom. And you're like, oh, <laughs> She's 90s. like, remember when I bought you pizza? And they're like, shut up, mom. We're going to shove it in the babysitter's face. <laughs> <laughs> shut up, mom. We don't like you, mom. Oh, oh my, my God. God. And then uh, it could have ended there, but it doesn't. Oh, we it. have to see our sad character, Emily, who was waiting up all night for Rocky's return. It's not healthy, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not good. Well, and then the other lesson of this movie that I think is ridiculous is then the evil bully neighborhood kids try to attack them again. And Rocky looks at Emily, his pseudo mom, and Emily goes, show off now. And then uh, they beat up the bullies. Oh, what? my God. 
Yes, he Peter Parker's the bully. He totally Peter Parker's the bully. And then, <laughs> and then wait, Kate, because I think this is what made me like lose my mind laughing. Did you hear the last song and the credits? Oh, did, I listened to the whole thing, did I? <gasps> What is that? Okay, we have like three little white kids trying to be Michael Jordan, trying to also, they're appropriating so much. And that last yeah. like rap song of, to me, it was like fight the power. And they yeah. turned it into a kid song that was like power of the kids. Power. Okay, kids the power. kids, I don't even think the kids were actively involved in this. I think they literally took excerpts of what the kids said throughout the movie and then like spliced it into the song because then randomly it'd be like shut up rocky be like no you shut up and then be like rap 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 and then you're like what this doesn't seem to match everyone i'm confused i, what, I was just what like what doing? power what no power <laughs> the ninja power bridge don't you know so bizarre that will not be a song being added to katie's spotify i'll tell you that don't so. add that to the list well, Bridge, we went through the whole movie, and what what do you think? Would you recommend people watch Three Ninjas, <laughs> whether the first time or a revisit? I'm going to say no. Oh. I'm going to give it a big, fat watch or don't watch, don't watch. I disagree. I think Ooh. this is I think this is a rewatch cuz it helps with the little nostalgia so that you kind of like you're not going to be as annoyed, but you need to have the right expectations. This is not a Mighty Ducks level 90s children's movie. This no. is I I don't know what to compare this to. This just isn't that. This is a movie that you are going to laugh at at parts that I don't think you're supposed to laugh at. And if you want to do that, which I love, that's why I like a lot of these kids movies movies is a lot of times like that then this is a good rewatch so i say rewatch this is like hocus pocus without the witches or the magic okay well that sounds like it's like a horrible movie then exactly <laughs> that's the best exactly <laughs> You, you're gonna laugh at it though so if you want to laugh at something which sometimes you're in that mood there you go so bridge it is now my turn to ooh, pick ooh, our next be movie better than this one i ruined it um i have very mixed opinions about this movie however this is a movie that was recommended to us this is a fan pick and we're going into a different decade we i feel like we've been in the 90s and 2000s for a while so we're going back to the 80s and this movie from what i remember i don't think this is a movie that holds up well with a rewatch i think a lot of people hear this movie and they're like oh, that's a great one that's so awesome and it's definitely iconic but uh, it's gonna be something so this is from 1984 Ooh, older this is a fan pick from one of our dear dear podcasting buddies mr prime nostalgia from the prime nostalgia podcast we love, love you prime nostalgia podcast so he said he, he said katie i think you're gonna like this movie i don't but you know maybe i'll change my mind but i probably <laughs> oh snap it's starring molly ringwald such oh, a classic movie you're and it's got classics. a lot of 80s nostalgia. So we are going to watch 16 Candles. Woo! Yeah. When was the last time you watched this? Oh, my God. A long time ago. Okay. I'm actually happy about that because I am going to be really excited to hear your perspective when we come together for this. I think cause... this is going to be like we joke about the 90s, but I think the 90s were a lot better than the 80s because the 80s is like kind of dark, right? I feel well, like there's going to be some dark themes. There are parts in this that are definitely what I would consider cringy and like not appropriate, but this movie is rated PG. Oh dear. And so this is the description. A girl's sweet 16th birthday becomes anything but special as she suffers from every embarrassment possible. Yeah, okay. Um, mm, okay. Interesting. I haven't seen it so long, so I don't really remember everything. Well, this is a John Hughes movie, so he wrote it and he directed it. I mean, that was like most of the very yeah. popular 80s, 80s movies. Um, so yeah, that's it. 16 candle. We're doing a little, what's Ooh, this called? A ro is this a romance? Going back. 
Oh, they call yeah. this a rom-com, and that's a really hard genre to hold up well, I'll tell you that. This is more rom than com, or what do we think? Uh, com, rom. I don't know. I don't know what they're trying to do. Oh my god, this will be so interesting. Yeah. Well, and Bridge, yeah. I just gotta say, if we were ninjas, and oh, oh. <laughs> we... <laughs> We're going to bed and just trying to like live our best life, going to bed as little children. And we realized that our house got broken into with some evil kidnappers. I would probably call the police and like jump out the window. Thank God. Thank God. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Kate, if you happen to fall in love with our our neighbor Rocky and was being really, really, really extra, I would take your alien technology phone, throw it out and give you six (laughs) more guys to date. Because you're better than that. You're better than Rocky. <laughs> well, that's, a, that's like a great exchange. I like that. That's awesome. <laughs> Don't get w- woken up in the middle of the night. You got more to pick from. Ow! Oh, get your it. bike back. Get my bike back. Oh my god! What a day! What a day! Oh, oh man! All right, listeners. Well, we'll see y'all next week for. 16 candles and there's probably some iconic 80s song in this movie but I don't remember it so we'll sing it next time see you next time <laughs> bye 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 I love you love you bye I love you bye bye thanks for tuning in to sisters who seen it you can listen to us on spotify apple podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts check out our website at sisters who seen it.com where you can email us request movies to be reviewed, and keep up to date with all things sisters. Also, make sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. See you next week!